What's going on guys and welcome back to Drive New Hampshire. And today I'm losing my virginity in more ways than one to one of the most instantly recognizable cars ever to come from the Mazda brand. I'm losing my Wankel engine virginity and I'm losing my right hand drive virginity. Needless to say, I'm excited for both and you should be too. This is the 1992 Mazda RX-7 Type R. Big special thank you to Northeast Auto Imports for loaning me this car for the day to review for you guys. This car is currently for sale there amongst an array of other cool imported Japanese cars. I'll include a link down in the description below so you can check out this listing amongst the other cool cars he has in his inventory. Mazda RX-7 is the Kim K of the car world. It made a name for itself in a video many, many years ago. Damn, that guy's fast. And for some reason has been popular ever since. So why then do flocks of people still run to this 90s Mazda coupe when it arrives at a car show? Today, I'm gonna tell you why. We're gonna dig into the FD third gen series six Mazda RX-7 and talk about its features and its performance specs. And then I'm gonna take it on the wrong side of the road and see how it goes. Not the wrong side of the road, you know what I mean. Now the RX-7 was Mazda's call to action to compete with its Japanese rivals, such as the Toyota Supra, Acura NSX, Mitsubishi 3000 GT, and the Nissan 300ZX. Though it took a different approach to performance by being the lightweight fighter. It made less power than its rivals, but it also weighed less at only 2,800 pounds. That's actually 500 pounds less than the 300ZX, and 1,000 pounds less than the 3000 GT. I can't stop eating! And this is an incredible example of one. It has only 31,000 miles or 50,000 kilometers. It's like being in a time capsule. Its vintage red trico paint shines wonderfully. It's almost all original, even down to the exhaust system. So starting with the exterior of the RX-7, now it's incredibly good looking due to its flowing simplicity. Cars just don't look like this anymore. And maybe that's why it's so admired. On the door, you'll notice at first glance there's no door handle. Mazda hid the door or lock and handle up on the trim to keep the design clean and untouched. It's one of the first things you'll notice. Next, you'll notice the purest 90 sports car design cue there is, the pop-up headlights. Yes, in true iconic 90 sports car style, this has the pop-up headlights, as if this car wasn't already cool enough. Speaking of lights, as you move to the rear of the car, you notice it doesn't appear to have any lights on the back, and that's because they are hidden under this dark tinted piece of plastic but are no less visible when they're on. This helps preserve the RX-7's chic design. Moving to the front under that sleek, lustrous hood, you'll find the most popular piece of equipment on the RX-7, and that is its power plant. 
This is the 1.3 liter 13B REW twin turbo Wankel rotary engine. this short, as opposed to a regular combustion engine with multiple pistons, the Wankel engine uses a three-sided rotor that looks like a spinning Illuminati, Eye of Providence, or Dorito, to create pressure which translates to rotating motion. This Wankel rotary engine pumps out 255 buzzing horsepower at 6,500 RPM and 217 foot-pounds of torque at 5,000 RPM. Torque was an issue with these engines, so to aid with that, there's twin Hitachi turbochargers. The first is an 80 millimeter turbo that operates from 1800 to 4000 RPM on the low end of the power curve. The second 105 millimeter turbo doesn't kick on till 4000 RPM to keep the power on all the way to the top of the Wankel's 8000 RPM redline. And when that second turbo kicks in, man do you feel a jolt. You feel a real, real kick in the pants. down at the tachometer and seeing it rev to 8,000 RPM. Holy jeez. That means this car will do 0 to 60 miles an hour in 4.9 seconds, the quarter mile in 13.5 seconds, all faster than its rivals, and keep on screaming all the way up to 157 miles an hour. That engine is mounted just far enough behind the front wheels to be considered midship car. That little engine sits low in back, which allows this car to have this simply alluring body style. Now it's zero to 60 time of 4.9 seconds was actually top 10 quickest for production cars at that time. Now that engine is mated to this five speed pilot shifted manual transmission, as opposed to the optional lame-o four speed automatic. Now that we're in the interior, you'll notice it's very flowing design elements similar to the exterior. It's full of rounded and semi-elliptical forms. Driver focus is still the main priority, and I like that. Even the driver gets a map pocket on his side door panel, the passenger side doesn't, and the cigarette lighter power outlet is right behind the steering wheel. Directly in front of the driver is that 9,000 RPM tachometer with the red line at 8,000 RPM. I can't say there are a lot of vehicles I've been in that have that. These seats are deep and provide ample support to the driver during some Colin McRae impersonations on the street. has a coveted thick rim that feels great to hold on to and if you enjoy driving barefoot well you're gonna love the cast aluminum clutch and brake pedals. You'll also notice the oddly shaped door handles in here that are unlike any other car I've seen. Another detail unlike any other car I've seen is these window switches. Now of course it has automatic windows like most cars but when you go to pull the button up it sticks up and then it clicks back into its normal position. When you go to put the window down, the button stays down and then clicks back into its normal position. I've never seen any other car do that. Now up on the dash here, we obviously have the light control switch, which activates the pop-up headlights. But there's another button above it that pops up the headlights, but doesn't actually turn on the lights. And there's two reasons for this. One, so you could actually wash the headlights, but more importantly, two, for snow conditions so that your pop-up headlights don't get stuck under snow and ice. Something especially relevant here in New Hampshire if you were to drive your RX-7 in the snow. Hmm. 
Now I'm not gonna lie, I am a bigger 12 year old at six foot five. It is a little bit snug in here for me. I know the designer wasn't thinking the big American with the thick behind was gonna try to fit in the Mazda RX-7, but regardless, I do fit. It is cozy. My lanky legs do thread just to the sides of the steering wheel, and I don't have much headroom, but if you are a normal human being and not a freak of nature, or so my dad calls me, the interior will be an even better place for you. This RX-7 does have a rear seat, but unless you're under the age of 12 months or have no legs, you're probably not gonna fit in there. It is tiny. Well, small would be an understatement. That's what she said. <laughs> I can barely get in the front seat. I'm not gonna even try to get in that back seat. The RX-7 is actually a hatchback. Rear cargo space in the RX-7 is a bit cramped. Then again, it is a little sport coupe. The trunk area is long and wide, but it is very shallow. Under the trunk here, you'll find the spare tire, the bright yellow spare tire. Unlike here in America, this yellow spare tire is designed to shame you into getting your tire fixed so you won't turn into one of us and be so lazy that you drive around on four spare tires all at once. Now as you drive the RX-7, you notice that 13B rotary engine. It doesn't have the violence of a high compression cammed out V8. Its power delivery takes a different approach. It's insanely smooth. I was not expecting a rotary engine to be this smooth, considering how it makes its power with the spinning Dorito. It makes quite the noise as well. This thing actually flies! <laughs> now that 255 horsepower doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it's still a whole lot of fun. It's fun because it's different. This thing handles great as well. Mazda has a history of making their suspension a cut above the rest, and this speaks well to it. Up front and out back are forged aluminum control arms. And as I said, the RX-7 only weighs 2,800 pounds, and you can feel it once you throw it into a bend. The car feels so balanced, almost perfectly balanced, and that's because it is with its 50-50 weight distribution. Mazda claims a maximum cornering force of 0.93 Gs. That's quite a bit. The power delivery is sensational in this car. The whole car is firm and feels hunkered down, even though it's so light it merely hovers above the road. It carves the road like a fresh piece of sushi. On one side of the corner you can mash the throttle and pin the tachometer to 8,000 RPM. Man, this thing screams. That's an experience that can only be enjoyed by a handful of cars, and this is one of them. If you enjoyed this review, you're definitely not gonna wanna miss the next one. And if you're interested in this pristine 31,000 mile, 50,000 kilometer, almost entirely original RX-7, then be sure to check out the link in my description to check out the listing and to see the other very special Japanese imported cars available for sale at Northeast Auto Imports. I'll see you guys in the next one. Happy motoring.